Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the BaileyWiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. Today, I wanted to make a short tutorial on all things curves in Dungeon Draft. I was recently working with one of our mastery students in our Patreon program, and we were heavily discussing curves in Dungeon Draft and how to get really nice results. So I thought I'd take the time to kind of discuss my personal theories on how to get nice looking curves and some advanced techniques for you. I'll have timestamps in the description, so feel free to skip along and find the sections most relevant to you. When it comes to creating curves in Dungeon Draft, there are three primary tools here. We have walls, pattern shapes, and the paths tool. There's additionally also the building tool. However, we prefer to use a combination of the walls and pattern shape tool rather than using the building tool. With all of these tools, in order to create a curve, you first set your point. And then when you go to select the second point, you hold down shift. And then from there, you can see this line turns kind of a purple color. And you are then setting the apex. You can think of the apex as kind of the point that is if you were to draw a line from it to the curve, that would be perpendicular to the curve at its greatest point between the interior and exterior. When creating curved points on walls or pattern shapes, whenever you hold down shift, you'll also notice that the line switches from the yellow color to pink or purple. And then you can then set that apex just like we were discussing earlier. Something that really helps with creating curves in Dungeon Draft is having the half grid snap on. It allows you to have a lot more precision, particularly when it comes to setting exact curves that you want to have at the apex being slightly different or being very precise if you want a really nice gentle curve. It's hard to replicate that without having the half grid on. So it just gives you a whole lot more control here. If you're not familiar with that setting, you can turn it on by going up into your menu then preferences, and it's under general, and then snaps at every half grid unit. Note that when you first turn this on, you're going to have to probably save and reopen Dungeon Draft. Sometimes it will kick in if you switch tools, but depending upon the version that you're on, for example, I am on the latest beta that allows for modding support, then you need to actually restart Dungeon Draft in order to have this setting take effect. But just keep that in mind, and it's a really helpful tool for all kinds of building. Snaps are really helpful in Dungeon Draft because then they allow you to have things easily replicable. For example, if I'm making a tower that is going to have kind of a curved front to it, having the snap points makes it much easier to replicate these curves exactly. Whereas if I don't have snap points and I'm just going off of kind of eyeballing it and I turn off my snap to grid, I'm gonna to have to use other landmarks in order to get these pieces working properly. And so it's just a lot easier to have these snap points rather than having to just go off of these different aspects here. When it comes to making curves look nice and smooth, particularly if you're going to build off of them, I like to imagine a rectangle whenever I'm creating them in Dungeon Draft. The rectangle is bound by my starting point and my ending point, and then it's just the width and the height. So if I'm creating a curve here, I'm envisioning that I want to put my apex somewhere within this particular rectangle. So if I start here and I go here and I'm creating a curve, then if I want it to be nice and smooth, I'm going to find a point in here somewhere. And you can see this is a pretty nice smooth curve and the curve itself is never extending beyond one of my starting points. As soon as I go out of this rectangle, then it will go out beyond that. And there are definitely times where I want to use that effect, particularly with paths where the smoothing out of the paths kind of makes those joints easier. But a good rule of thumb is keeping inside this rectangle because then when you make additional curves, they're going to line up really nicely that way. And I have found that's a good recipe for getting curves that look good, is every time you're creating a curve, 
you're envisioning this rectangle and you are picking a point inside of that rectangle in order to set the apex. You can see this is nice and smooth. Again, this uh, hides some crimes a little bit with the curves as you're using the path tool, but the same principle applies here with the pattern shape tool. I'm not making these curves perfectly symmetrical, but by following that principle of using that rectangle, I'm able to have multiple curves with different angles fit together pretty nicely and give me a relatively smooth surface here, even though, again, these curves aren't the exact same angles. So that's a technique you can use whenever you are looking to mix and match some different curve types. If you want a more amorphous shape like this, or if you're getting creative with a room design. That same idea of the rectangle being bound by our starting and end points, we can also use that for making perfect circles. When it comes to making circles, you need to work in quarter circles rather than uh, semicircles. So if I try to make a semicircle here, you can see I can never actually get this to be a proper uh, semicircle. Instead, when I close this off, it's much more of a parabola shape. And you can also compare that by using the regular circle tool, and you can see that they don't line up exactly. So to actually make this, we're gonna work in that quarter circle and using that rectangle theory we talked about, there's also a ratio I like to think of when making a quarter circle and that's one to one to one. So for every unit you're gonna go up or down on the Y axis, you're also gonna go that far over on the X axis. So here I'm gonna go up two and then to the left two when I make my point holding shift and then setting my apex, it's gotta be within this rectangle or square for a quarter circle. And then if I just use that final ratio of one, we're gonna go back down or back to the right one to make our perfect quarter circle, whether that's going to be a internal or external curve here. And so then you can see if we close this out, that's a really nice quarter circle. And we can go ahead and use our circle tool to compare that and they do line up perfectly. So that's the technique that you can use to make perfect quarter circles or semicircles, or even whole circles if you need to add that onto existing rooms. So that we've talked a little bit about curves and some theory in terms of how to get nice curves that fit together, let's make kind of an unusual room shape. I was designing a room similar to this with one of our mastery tier uh, patrons that wanted some help with designing a map. And so I'm gonna use that as kind of a teaching example here. So this room kind of had a pill shape to it, and I want to add in a circular kind of bevel to this room. So we're gonna start off with a quarter circle. And again, we're using that one by one by one kind of ratio here. So I want this to be a two grid by two grid size quarter circle. So I'm gonna go up two and over two. And then when I place my point, I'm gonna go down to the other corner of our rectangle. You can think of it like that. And that's where I'm gonna put that apex so it has this nice even rate of curvature throughout. Then this is going to have kind of a flat opening. And so I'm going to keep the whole back of this curved, but we're not gonna make it super deep. And so instead of being a quarter circle here, we're gonna make it a little shallower. And again, if we're following that ratio with keep something inside of the rectangle, we end up getting a pretty smooth result. You can most closely mimic having that kind of quarter circle curvature on the edge by picking that other corner here. As you can see, there is a pretty good lineup there. And then obviously the less curvature you add to it, the more that joint is going to kind of stick out. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. Then again, because we have our nice snapping, we're able to replicate this really easily. We're going over three, down two, and then setting our apex at the corner, which is then going to transition nicely into our quarter circle down here. And then we can finish off the room and we have this kind of mushroom shape. where We've got a nice curve to the floor. Walling is much the same as creating this original pattern shape. And we can make this all one continuous piece really nicely. And especially because we used our snap to grid earlier, we can replicate all of these. So once again, we're gonna go over and then we're gonna set our apex up in these corners. 
and you have a really nice clean wall. And this is not something that'd be so easy to replicate if we were using just the free hand on the curves. Another tool that we can use here if we want to have a truly uniform curve is we can start with an oval. So this is gonna be six by four. And so it's a similar footprint to the actual room area of this. And then we can use our edit points to actually build out this piece. So I am going to have my snap on and I'm gonna move these points down to create my hallway. And then I'll delete the extra bit right there. Now, depending upon how your curve comes out, there's kind of a different rate of amount of points along the edge of the curve, depending upon the size of the object that you create. You might not necessarily actually have to edit these any further if you're going to put walls over it. For example, if we draw a wall up here, you can see that it covers up that crime pretty nicely. So we don't really need to worry too much about getting our pattern shape perfectly. If you did want to make sure everything lined up perfectly, then you can turn off your snap to grid and just use the natural lines on this to line it up exactly. And you just kind of try and follow along on that line. And there you go. But again, if you're putting walls over this, then your crimes are pretty well hidden and you don't have to be as precise on the pattern shapes. Speaking of walls, we can use some similar techniques in order to have this nice uniform curve here. And this is a trick that we've shown off before, but I'm gonna demonstrate it to you again. We know that this is a kind of a perfect ellipse or oval. So we know if we start here in the center point down the bottom and go to the center point on the left, then we're going to fit it on the apex here. The same thing as if it was a quarter circle. So kind of just stretching that idea out. And we're gonna repeat that up here. I'm gonna keep going around. Now, the difference here is normally in order to complete closing the circle, you can left click and then this is a full circle of walls. But you'll notice that if I delete a point, the wall just rejoins itself. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna undo that and we're gonna turn off our edit points and we're gonna get back to redrawing it. And we're gonna go back around this oval. However, when I go to finish this for this apex, rather than left clicking, I'm going to right click and we'll see that this wall is not actually completely joined. And so now we can use this technique to edit the points where we bring it down to be at the end of our hallway. We can simply delete points from our wall in order to get closer. And then we'll turn off our snap to grid again in order to get this really precisely fit in. And with working with walls, sometimes you need to adjust these points a little bit to get these little artifacts out of it. And you might even find deleting some points is helpful here as well. And that's how you can really nicely make a uniform curve of a wall and then extend out this hallway portion. A final technique I wanna show you we've covered before, but it definitely bears repeating here for this video discussing curves. And that's going to be creating references for yourself. So this is a technique that I first learned from Bailey when he was making the galleon ship. And that is using some reference points to make things easily replicable. So I've created this path here and I know this is kind of my endpoint, and maybe I'll go ahead and use the path tool for that. Uh, I also like using something like a barrel. And then I can put these points where my beginning and my end point and my apex point are, because then I can then extrapolate this to going down and using the exact same points if I'm mirroring it. It makes it really easy for these, whereas if I'm just trying to remember, particularly if I'm just going around the whole ship, then I can keep track of exactly where these points are. And so now this is really easily replicable and we can see that if I switch to a different path, I can keep this exactly in the right position. 
So this is incredibly helpful for making things easily repeatable. I don't know about you, but when I am working on something with a lot of curves and maybe I'm not doing all of these steps all at once, maybe I'm coming back and I'm doing my pattern shape first and then doing some extra object work or adding in patterns to other parts of the ship and then I'm coming back with my walls or I decided I wanna change something. It can be really easy to forget where these pieces are. And then, I mean, even just as a demonstration, let me make a pattern shape without using this technique to match the bow. And I promise I am not trying to um, deliberately throw uh, this little challenge here when it comes to remembering where all of my points are. And even just going around the ship, I'm having a hard time remembering exactly where I put my points. And you can see that it's not perfectly symmetrical. Um, I'm, I'm doing my best here to remember exactly where those points go. And sometimes if I'm really concentrating, I can get it done. But it's a lot easier to use my path tool to set up each of these segments, remember where I ended the segments, or give myself little markers, and then have these reference points. Now, this is really helpful if I'm using this as kind of a layout level. So I've created another level called ship, and this is where I'll actually make this. And just turning on my compare levels tool, I have the ground here. And now when I'm designing my ship, I don't need to go through and set up these different little pieces again. I already know, okay, this is exactly where my start and end points are for my curves. This is exactly where the apexes go. And we have these pieces in beautifully. So this is easy to replicate with all of my different pieces. And I can adjust my opacity, et cetera, in order to make these more and less visible for myself. So I have this really nice template for replicating all of my curves whenever I am working on my ship. That's going to conclude our tutorial on curves and curve techniques in Dungeon Draft. I hope that this has taught you some new tricks and given you some inspiration when making your maps. If you'd like me to go more in depth on any of these techniques or have questions about them, let me know in the comments down below. And also let us know if there's any other techniques or tools that you'd like to learn more about in Dungeon Draft. We're happy to produce more videos on those for you guys, so just let us know. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content and consider becoming a patron. Not only to support the channel, but you also gain access to our archive of Dungeon Draft maps, our litany of Dungeon Draft assets like those featured in this video. And we also offer our mastery tier where we have office hours for going through and coaching these different problems or learning these new techniques like the one that inspired this video. So once again, this has been Zephyr with the Bay of the Wiki channel. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun making your maps and have a good one.